Finally, there's an expansion of the inner argument too. It's not just the argument from conscience, it's also the argument from, well, what are the three things that your heart wants the most? I think everybody in the world wants three things the most, and it wants each of these three things infinitely. We put a limit on everything else. I just had a, a, a nice little lunch over here. I don't want another one now. There's a limit. And if I were a glutton, I might want to eat five meals a day, but I wouldn't want 50. Everything else that we want is limited. But goodness, truth, and beauty are unlimited. We don't say, I just want two good things, but not three. Or I want to know 13 truths, but not 14. Or I want to see beauty six days a week, but on the seventh day, I want to see ugliness. <laughs> we want goodness, truth, and beauty infinitely. All right, let's look at those three things. We want truth, and sometimes we get it, and when we do get it, where do we get it from? Our own fallible, motionless, uh, moving minds? No. Other people's fallible minds that keep changing and learning and making mistakes? No. Uh, things in nature that keep changing and they're unpredictable? No. How do you know that two and two are four? How do you know that two and two are always four? How do you know that if you go to the planet Mars, two and two will still be four? How do you know that 20 billion years from now, if the universe is still here, two and two will be four? That's not like E equals MC squared. Because in the first few minutes after the Big Bang, that wasn't true. There were no atoms until nature cooled down enough to produce them. And energy took a different form. And it wasn't that mathematically convertible. Uh, there are galaxies that have anti-gravity, maybe, rather than gravity. So the law of gravity is not an absolute. But two and two or four is an absolute. The laws of logic are absolute. Everything is what it is and not what it isn't. It's a miracle to walk through a wall, but it's a logical impossibility to walk through a wall and not walk through a wall at the same time. God can do any miracle at all but he can't do a logical contradiction because there is no such thing. It's meaningless. Now, how can we know that? How can our changing mind be in contact with eternal, absolute truth? A little of it, anyway. Maybe that's God's mind illuminating us. Maybe we're in touch by a kind of remote mental telepathy with the mind of God. Maybe. Maybe that's not even a proof. Maybe it's just a clue. It's one of Augustine's famous arguments for the existence of God, the argument from the eternity of truth. And if, if your reason, if your mind is not valid, if it's just a computer that happens to have been programmed by chance and random forces in nature and, and the accident of evolutionary natural selection, well, why do you trust that? If you discovered that your laptop had been uh, tampered with by your two-year-old, and that your two-year-old reprogrammed it just by hitting the keyboard like that overnight. Would you trust it to give an accurate uh, account of uh, your company's finances tomorrow? I don't think so. If you're riding on a plane and the public address system says the pilot and the co-pilot both died, but we're going to land safely because the plane is run by autopilot and the autopilot is programmed by a computer that has been programmed by a random fall of hailstones last night. The uh, keyboard was left outside. Uh, you would be perfectly safe, right? No. Well, then why do you trust your own mind and its instrument, the brain, which is like a computer, if there's no programmer behind it? Once upon a time, nowhere in the universe was there any human beings and therefore any human minds. And human minds came into existence. If God didn't make them and program them, then they came into existence simply by blind, dumb chance. Why do you trust them then? I think that's a pretty good argument. All right, that's the one about the true. Here's one about the good. What we desire deep down in our hearts is a kind of good that is unattainable on Earth, a kind of happiness, a kind of joy, a kind of completion that we never have. We have moments of happiness, of course, but they're followed by moments of less than happiness. And even the moments of perfect contentment that we have are not fantastic, mystical joy. 
some of us maybe have just a few of those moments during our lives, and many of us maybe never do, but we long for them. So we all want something more than we get. Uh, one of my favorite philosophical lines is a line made famous by probably the richest philosopher in the world, Mick Jagger. You can't always get what you want. Another one, I can't get no satisfaction. Why? Why do our hearts want more than anybody can ever in this life get? Even the atheist has to admit, if he understands Christianity, that it's, it's quite a clever fairy tale. There's a God who's infinitely perfect and infinitely beautiful and loves you infinitely and he wants to give you his infinite joy in infinite eternity forever. Wow, that's much too good to be true. Okay, maybe so, at least you understand it. It's not dull platitudes, it's absolutely fantastic. Well, even if it isn't true, somebody invented it. All right, people invented it. Uh, where'd they invent it from? Well, their own hearts. Oh, you would like that to be true too, wouldn't you? Well, of course, anybody would. Why? What do you mean, why? Where'd that desire come from? I don't know. Why do I have to answer that? Well, look at all the other desires. Uh, you desire millions of different things, right? Mm -hmm. And most of them are unique to you. You want the Red Sox to win, somebody else wants the Yankees to win. You want a Lexus, somebody else wants a Lincoln Town Car. Uh, you want a uh, million dollars, somebody else is content with a thousand. So most of the things that we want aren't universal. But there are some things that are universal. They come from human nature, which we all share. For instance, we all want life and not death. We all want pleasure and not pain. Uh, we all have sexual desires. We want to eat, we want to drink, we want to rest, we want to know and not be stupid. We want to see beauty and not ugliness. We want other people to treat us justly and fairly. We want to be loved. Those are all universal human desires. And they all correspond to uh, desires that we avoid the opposite. You want to be loved, not hated. You want to have friends, not enemies. You want to see beauty, not ugliness. You want to live, not die. You want to be not starving, but filled. All right? So every desire that's natural and universal and innate to human nature can be satisfied in this world. Maybe it won't. Maybe you'll die tomorrow night and you would all like to live longer, but there's something in this world, something in reality, that satisfies every natural, innate human desire. It would be very strange if we found somebody with an innate desire for something that doesn't exist. 